Hi, my name is Mike Rand with 3 Sharp. State machine workflows allow you to model real-world events and business processes in ways that aren't available to sequential workflows. By modeling a workflow on states and transitions, a state machine workflow provides the ability to create powerful business tools. Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 has templates that provide a great starting point for creating state machine workflows. The scenario we're going to cover is a simple expense report approval process. An expense report has been submitted and needs to be approved or rejected. We're going to manage this process using states. Let's get started. Before we get into our Visual Studio project, I wanted to mention that we use an expense report form and a approval task form. For more information on those uh, topics, please reference the Visual How To Building an Expense Report Approval Workflow for SharePoint Server 2007 using Visual Studio 2008 and creating a simple custom approval workflow for SharePoint Server 2007 using SharePoint Designer 2007. Those uh, visual how-to's will give you more information about how those forms were created and integrated into the process. In this visual how-to, we're going to focus mainly on how to lay out your uh, state machine workflow, get it set up, and get it integrated with SharePoint. Here we have opened a Visual Studio 2008 state machine workflow project and we have four states on here report initial state, report submitted state, report rejected state, report complete state. We're going to be adding a fifth state, report approved state. Let's do that now. The first thing we need to do is drag a state onto our designer surface so we can select state here in the Windows Workflow 3.0 category and we'll just drag that onto the document surface now. Let's rename this to report approved state. Go ahead and hit enter. We want to drag onto the report approved state a state initial initialization activity. So we'll select that and drag that onto that state now. We'll rename this to state init approved state. Go ahead and hit enter. Now to get into the detailed view of this initialization state, just double click on it on the designer surface. This will open up the detailed view as you can see here. Now we need to fill out our details here. So we need to drag three activities onto our state initialization state here, activity. So the first thing we're going to drag over is a logged history list activity. The logged history list activity allows us to record information about our workflow that can be seen in SharePoint. Next we need to drag over a complete task activity. Uh, this allows us to complete a task that we created in a previous state. And finally, we need to drag over a set state activity. Now, there's two set states here, one up here and one down here in the Windows Workflow version 3.0. This is the one we want. So drag that over and drop that there. The next thing we want to do is rename our log activity. So we'll select that now over here log to history report approved hit enter and then we're going to right click on this guy and we're going to select generate handlers this opens up our code behind class and provides us with a method signature for this method or this activity switch back to the designer and we'll select complete task. Over here we want to rename this to complete task report approved. Go ahead and ent hit enter. Now we need to set up a couple properties on this complete task. So we'll select the correlation token property and from the drop down we'll select task token. Now we need to set the task ID so we'll click down here and we'll click the ellipsis in the far right hand corner. This brings up our binding dialog and we will select task ID from 
existing members and click OK. The final thing we need to do here is rename our set state activity. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And we will rename this to set state approved complete. Hit enter. Now we need to set the target state name. This is going to transition us to a new state. So we have to specify which state we want to transition to. In this case, we want to complete the workflow. So we're going to go to report complete state. That's just a simple demonstration of how we can drag activities into uh, workflows to set up our states. Now to return back to the state view, you can click on the breadcrumb up here and you're back up here. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to hook up our report submitted to our approved state. So we're going to go ahead and double click on event review report. Down here you see we have an if else and we have a set state condition here to set it to a report rejected state. So we're going to drag set state into our if else condition here and drop that. We're going to rename it to set state report approved and hit enter. And our target state now we're going to set is report approved state. We can go back up to our state view now and you can see we've now fully wired up our workflow. You're ready to go ahead and hit F5 to run this workflow. Test it and debug it. State machine workflows allow you to model real world events and businesses processes. Visual Studio 2008 makes creating and debugging these workflows easier than ever. Another benefit of creating these workflows in Visual Studio is the ability to package your workflow features and deploy them easily. For, inf for more information on this, see the visual how-to, Configuring and Deploying a Workflow to SharePoint Server 2007 Using a Solution Package.